All right, so I'm Guy, and uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, what's going on in my school. And yeah, so in 2014, I believe, I like was first introduced to uh, Linux, or I thought, I thought it was synonymous to Ubuntu, basically. And then so I tried to install a, a really old laptop, and that didn't work, because I installed my MacBook Air. And uh, the trackpad was bad, so I saw like Linux is not for me. <laughs> and, and then in, uh, like, as I was going through real school, I was very uh, conscious about the privacy thing, and uh, Edward Stone and stuff. So when I did this presentation in middle school, I chose to do that by privacy. And uh, in the end, like I blamed Google and Microsoft and stuff. And in the end, it was a big penguin. I don't think I, re I don't re really remember why I put a penguin there. I'm pretty sure it was because of Linux. And then that's that's like end of middle school. And then high school, um, I bought like this laptop and I decided to put Linux on it because of all the privacy stuff with Windows 10. And then yeah, that's Linux. So and freshman year, I wasn't really. I was using a. 12 year old laptop because I sold my MacBook Air before we moved to San Diego. So I wasn't really into computers that much. Couldn't really watch anything, do anything. Just uh, using Windows XP. Uh -oh. That's great. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, and then in the end of 2017, uh, yeah, I installed Linux and everything was great until I, sent, uh, until I installed Cubes OS uh, in, in the winter. And the reason I installed Cubes OS was because We'll talk about the presentation. Um, the other part. And then I was more conscious about open source and I saw I saw, I started seeing people like not like people just don't give a shit. People don't care about the software they're using as long as, long as it gets them to the point um, they want to go to, like Instagram or social network and stuff. Like they don't care what they're using or the ethical implications or anything because it's it's working. And for you to switch softwares, it has to be so much better and free. Um, otherwise, you're not going to switch. Because as, as long as people are going to use Google, yes. You're saying free, and you mean gratis? Is that Both. What you mean? OK. Pretty good. Uh, because people, like, you can't give someone an alternative that's going to cost money because they're already using what they're using. So uh, yeah, basically, it's, like, I, wasn't, I didn't see any way of it changing. Um, now there's, after I talked to that person, there is more of a way, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. Okay, so in this year, and I'm going to talk about a little about my uh, robotics team, I joined FRC, and then first, was the, this was the first year, January 2019, they made Linux an official development environment for ro robots, and then, which is really nice, but they, you still have to use Windows for the uh, driver station, which is developed by National Instrument. Anyone? Has any affiliations to National Instruments? No. Have you? Do you know them? I, I, I've encountered their software, yes, but I'm not affiliated. So what do you think about it? It's big and complicated, and it's a pain in the butt. Agreed. <laughs> you, can, you can get. Uh, they, they support Linux in some cases. Yeah, but the, the thing is, the driver station because they don't want you to hack the comp before the driver station was different. And then people were hacking into the robots while they were competing and like disabling robots <laughs> in the competition. So they had to lock it down and it's really, like you can't do anything basically. It's really locked down. You can only install the windows. So then someone did a Q driver station, which is for Linux. And then because you have to, uh, that's, that's my robot by, by the way. Uh, Very cool. Uh, yeah. So we, uh, we won three competitions, but lost in uh, world championships. Well done. It's kind of sad. Cause, cool. yeah, basically, it didn't work out. Okay, so. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah, basically, uh, there's no, there's no, you can't run away from it. Google is, is like it's done. Microsoft is not doing anything that, that I can see. I mean, I'm in school, I don't, I don't really know anything other than what's going on in school. Um, so Google is pretty much taking over. Everyone's using Chromebooks. Everyone has Google accounts. If you don't have a Google account, you're dead. Basically, if you don't exist, basically, I don't have a Google account other than what I'm given from school. And they recently added Gmail to that. So basically, if you don't use Google, yeah, and at least what I can, from what I can see, um, you can't really do anything. If you don't have an iPhone, you don't exist. Yeah. I, I stopped using Google I don't know, three months ago. I went. I, I installed a new. I mean, sort of using Google. I have an old Rome. 
or a lineage of Esteban. Yeah, I have that here. I've, I've tried my very hardest. I think I think it's possible to live without Google. Yeah, I don't I don't have Google Play <laughs> services. I'm having I have a central phone. I don't have any Google Play services on it. I don't have any. I don't use Google like Google Classroom from the website and stuff. But then. Yeah, I installed Lineage OS and I sort of updated and it failed, so I installed different ROM. And then that, that reboots like every two hours. So I don't have, at least I don't have RAM issues. <laughs> like, uh, uh, yes. Actually, um, go ahead. Uh, questions would be more. No, no, um, I, I remember <coughs> thinking the exact same thing about 10 years ago with Apple, because every single classroom had a Mac. And then I became a teacher. And um, we were all using Google Docs because it's just free and easy. I tried to talk to the other teachers saying, like, um, this is a privacy concern. What the hell? And, you know, saves our arguments. I was saying last year, with like, okay, Mac, or 10 years ago, you know, Apple is taking over the school and forcing it into this never ending uh, thing. Is there anything? as a current student that you're seeing on the periphery, maybe in like a mobile space that might uh, shove off Google and take over? I mean, as long as, like there's, the thing is, everything, like every open source alternative, like it's self-hosted, mm -hmm. and the school doesn't want to take responsibility for your, like they don't really want to take responsibility for, for that. They don't, like at least space in San Diego is so expensive. Why even bother using servers? Why don't you just oh, like just use Google? They have like servers in Arizona. It's, I don't know a buck for an acre or something, and like just you don't need you don't need to worry about space and stuff in your area. You don't have to worry about security because Google is taking care of that. You don't have to worry about redundancy because Google is taking care of that. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff that Google is taking care of, but you are paying your data pretty much. Um, is there an alternative? Uh, no, <laughs> because it's so so well managed, and you just sign in with your account, and everything is just there. Uh, yes. Okay. How old are your textbooks, basically? Textbooks? I don't know. Twenty years ago. So are they using the Google and the internet, using Google applications and the internet to supplement for out of date textbooks? And we're not using textbooks in the internet. We're using the, the textbooks we have. Uh, Google, like we don't use that much technology, I think. It's just um, when we do something with technology, it's always Google. Um, was there someone over here? Uh, no one? Okay, let's continue. Um, okay, so, and then I saw um, some, I think Blondo had a video on education in like December. And then I'm like, that's something I can talk about. So I registered the presentation. And then I taught, and then in my computer science class, um, there was three people from the uh, cybersecurity department that came over to talk about cybersecurity, I guess. Uh, more like, well, not really. Like they showed us how like they're hacking the school computers. And they said how, like how easy it is to hack into a computer. So then you should have everything in the cloud, which I don't know how that works really, but I, make, I, I would understand from their point of view, if I don't store stuff on the school computer, they don't have to worry about it, right? So if I don't save stuff to my sh like shared drive on their servers and I put it on Google, like they don't have to worry about it. They don't. Well, people in Google, I assume, or they assume, are like the uh, weakest chain uh, link in the chain of Google is a little harder than what we have in school. Like teachers that are really tech savvy, I guess. Uh, they're using computers and just click on an email and that's it. All social security, everything's just gone. Because they have, they have so much responsibility. I, mean, I think they would prefer to have it, some of it off them. So then, uh, I, yeah. So, I would disagree that the schools are offloading so that they're not liable. Because they are very much liable. Yeah, they are. Yeah, definitely. And it shifts what they have to focus on. Yeah. If it's in the cloud, I, you can go anywhere, download it to a library computer and work on it, in the, and then not delete it, right? You can take it home and access it easier than if it's on the district server. So it shifts the type of liability, 
and the type of investment now they have to spend. <clears throat> so there's other reasons besides uh, they don't want to be responsible for it. That's part of it in some capacity. But yeah, not I'm gonna talk about picture. It. Yeah. So also we do have access to the uh, the shared drives from our computers at home. If it's, like, you just go on the district website and go look at the files. Yeah, part of the reason obviously manpower and it's just, just money in general. Just money always comes first. Always. And having your own storage servers because we're constantly growing the amount of storage you need. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's too expensive for them to try and especially, keep it all on local Especially servers. in San Diego. Yeah. 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 One thing that I've never explored and I as teaching students at times I, I, I feel guilty about it. But when you use a service like Zoom or Google or whatnot, they come with unreadable end user license agreements. Yeah, I'll talk about that. Now those impose at least in theory, impose restrictions on students' freedom that are not imposed by the history. Mm, what do you mean? Like you can't, you can't do what? Well, suppose an end user license agreement says, uh, I don't know. Um, I think I get what you're saying. You can't, um, you can't say such and such. Mm -hmm. okay. Then you are imposing a free speech restriction that is not being imposed by the district, but is being imposed by a vendor. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. How can you say no if it's a requirement for class too? You can't decline. Yeah. Yep. So you know, I, I can't as a student. I I don't have the freedom to say no. I I have to sign the end license agreement if I want to go to a public school. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And so, so there was a, there was a book, uh, but by J J Luna, um, really really a nice book. Um, and he said that there's no privacy in, in public schools, basically. So if you want, if you want privacy, you just don't go to public school. You, go, you, you need to be self. You have to go to a home. You need to be homeschooled, basically, if you want privacy. So let's, let's go back a little bit. So after the cybersecurity department came to our computer science class and talked about how we should put everything in the cloud, and he, well, back, by the way, first time I saw an adult actually using Linux. <laughs> Cali Linux uh, to uh, hack the school computer. Mm -hmm. um, they did remove the, they did remove the uh, firewall and the antivirus. So it wasn't that easy. But you just sent him a link. He clicked, on, he clicked on the link, and that's it. Like you were done. Um, so that, after that, I installed Cube's OS. But that was a little too much, um, too hard. For your 12-year-old laptop, you said? Uh, no, for the oh. seven-year-old laptop. Oh, okay. Now. Mm -hmm. I mean the technology it's a uh, third gen. And then so but the all the dates on the computer are from 20, December twenty thirteen. So pretty uh, late uh, product. So um, I after I got the uh, presentation I went I wanted to talk to the person from cybersecurity department about, how, about what's going on with Google and in the school and how if they care about students' privacy, why why are we using Google basically? So yeah. I, I went to talk with Vong, and he pretty much told me that whenever they are um, deciding a new software, they there's a thing called I'm assuming every big corporation does that a thing called vetting. So they they talk to the uh, um, marketing department and they talk with them. I guess they have lawyers I'm assuming. So then the thing talk about the end user license agreement. They, because they have more buying power. Um, than an individual, they can somewhat dictate the privacy policy um, of the product they're trying to purchase. It obviously doesn't work with a big company like Google because they're Google and Microsoft and stuff. But with a smaller company, they can kind of um, remove stuff from their privacy policy, especially because uh, you're talking about um, underage people and there's some stuff that you can't like data that you're not allowed legally. I don't know if we're going to listen to the law. But uh, you know, there's some stuff you're not supposed to do in general. And then, still, I was really confused. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I was gonna say there's all sorts of regulatory requirements yeah, around yeah. like FERPA data, and I don't remember what the acronym is for K twelve data. It's escaping me, but yeah, yeah. protected educational records. So these yeah. companies are uh, eager to um, maybe eager is not the right word, but if they're if they're they're willing to uh, you know meet the requirements of those regulations to get into business. Yeah, yeah, right? I think. Yeah, and, get, and get and get the students locked into the ecosystem. So yeah, so I think one of the uh, one of the things that I asked him like how how happy do the uh, salesperson seem to be when they're about to close? Um, beyond like normal happiness, if you're about to close a really really good deal, like beyond that, like how happy are they going to get like thousands of, of inf like stuff about people that you can later sell or uh, advertise? <laughs> so I said. Like when he talk, he when he talks to advertising, um, and talks to salespeople, they seem pretty excited. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so still, why Google? Um, so what he said is that it's more like what I said before. It's more managed. They don't have to worry about student like passwords and stuff. It's all it's all Google. And then. Most of the times when, when uh, like when you, people are just, it's just way easier for them to not worry about, the win like they have to update Windows, they have to pay for Windows, they have to use Microsoft, they have to do all that stuff. And you can't, just, you can't, you can't it's so easy with Google, it, it's just a no brainer, I guess, for a school. Yeah. What about your teachers? What technology do they use that's incorporated with Google? Have you ever heard about Google Classroom? Yeah, everyone uses it. We moved him. So um, the the, uh, the university uses Blackboard. He used to use his Blackboard. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm. That's, <laughs> that's what I heard from. <laughs> that's what I heard from a, a friend. And then the school uses Google Classroom. Last year was the last. Last year was the last year that we're going to use Blackboard, and all the uh, teachers were forced to move to Black to uh, Google Classroom. And some of the teachers just use Google Classroom. Like they would use Blackboard, and it's just like, like uploading. I don't know. It's so weird. Like people just don't know how to keep doing things. Yeah. I think you're actually hitting on um, something that is experienced across a lot of um, specialists when they're trying to work with schools. Uh, so I did my thesis on e-learning implementation, and then I worked in tech, and I worked in mental health. And we're seeing a lot of the same issues with uh, working with autistic kids and trying to talk to teachers and say, no, you can't you know, lock them in a closet for three hours at a time. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know, the teacher will say, I've got 35 kids, and this is the only thing I can do to keep them safe. And so you end up sort of with this budding heads. And I saw the same thing with a lot of technology. And kind of the one time I saw it working out really well was with a former programmer who is now a uh, hybrid uh, school teacher, and he was just bypassing all the Blackboard stuff and using Google. And he got a few of his uh, colleagues to do it, but he wasn't really able to make it take off. And eventually the administrators cut down on it. And it seemed like it was a problem in education. And you know, the fact that there's way, like, teachers are seeing 200 students. I just don't have the time to effectively implement all this stuff. So they go with, you know, Google because it's just the easiest and it's right. Yeah. The only thing that's right in front of Yeah, them. but all, all the teachers were complaining. My math, my former math teacher was complaining about um, using Google Classroom. And she was like, oh, all this Google stuff all the time. She's actually like a 50 year old a woman that has nothing to do with <laughs> any technologies. Like, Google's so bad. The only <laughs> thing is in graduate schools, what? The, in teacher graduate school, they will teach Google Classroom to the new generation of teachers. Yeah. But I don't, like, the thing, I guess Google is doing a mistake here because if you need someone to teach you how to use Google Classroom, Google is definitely doing a mistake because you shouldn't need someone to teach you how to use a Google product. It should be so intuitive that you just use it. That's, if I were in charge of making a Google thing, I would just make it just a one button, um, you click it, it reads your brain, and it knows what you want and wants to do, or something like that. We're close to that now, right? Yeah, we are pretty close to that. The only thing is, when it comes to education, it's a, it's a way of incorporating what you know in the curriculum 
in treating the grid and how to use it. Education is pretty yeah. uh, pretty slow industry, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and, because, and probably more because of the money. So, and there's a new uh, computer science class other than the old one that California got the class like four, uh, 40 Chromebooks and each one I looked it up was $400. Mm -hmm. And then you could, you could have definitely gotten a different, better computer for $400, not the uh, flipping, uh, like the swiveling tablet-like thing that you can just tap on stuff that you don't really need. So, and it, so the moment you have a standardized system like Google, uh, everything just becomes easier. Um, for a school, at least. And okay, so next. Um, yeah, so also in uh, one thing I expected to have a answer that involved Linux was um, servers. So ask me like, so I'm assuming all all these win, uh, Linux servers, and no, they don't. A lot of Windows servers. Yep, they do. Why? Why do they use Windows directly is the answer to that one. I mean, I don't really have a technical answer. Yeah, because it can be so, so integrated with it. I mean, that might. Uh, so he said that it's more, uh, it's easier to scale in a big corporation, mm -hmm. and that uh, Linux servers are more for the uh, freelancer type well, business thing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I like. I was like, yeah, but everyone's everyone's using it. That's the rest of the is using Linux. Yeah. You're saying the Google servers are No, no. So for the for the for the. Google is independent, and then so we have <coughs> Chromebooks for everything else, and then Windows um, computers or De like Dell's, like this stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, all in ones. Uh, for the rest of like for CAD, uh, for talk, like uh, Photoshop and computer science, we have Windows computers, and then so for that stuff they have um, a shared drive in like the district center, like north of us, like ten miles. So. For those computers, they have a Windows server, so they, um, that's what I asked them. So every time you boot up, there was this like, uh, black screen that, it, it, like connecting to the server, I'm assuming it asked them for confirmation for the license, it comes back. So I, was, I wanted to just try to, like, to boot it up without an Ethernet cable connected, to see what it would do, if, like it boots, boots to the actual like, hard drive, but uh, I didn't really do that. Because um, you would never do that. I would never think you shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> but what, 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 so what I told him is like you're not you don't have access to the C drive, but if you want to if you want go to the website and do save as, it goes to downloads from the whole like file path, so you can just click back and look at all the other people's user accounts from there. So he's like, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> he, um. Okay, what else did I want to say? Okay, so, they, so what I, he said is that they have, it's like, I'm like, so when he said Windows servers, I'm, my first thought was like, that's a lot of money. That's loads of, like every three years you have to update to the new Windows server. And it's a thousand dollars for each server, and so much money. So I'm like, it, why, why isn't no one using it and it's free? Like, well, the two fees, like he said. And then, so he said it's more about for people about the money, they don't look a lot forward. They're more about like retraining all the staff and hiring Linux professionals is more expensive than I'm assuming rebuying uh, licenses every time. And then they already have the people that know how to use Windows servers and all that crap. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, so like, yeah, I saw him use Linux in his uh, on his laptop when he hacked the computer when he went, came to our class. So you probably use Linux. No, you're not allowed to use Linux because you can't connect to the network because they don't want to, you bring your own device to be connected to the network because they are responsible for thousands of social security numbers and dates and addresses and stuff. So you have to use their laptop, their stuff, their software. And then I was, do you have any software that requires Windows that you can use on your Work laptop, no. So they don't. Windows is purely bureaucratic in the district. There's no actual reason to use it. Every all the tools they use is all. They don't. It doesn't require Windows. So the only reason they keep using Windows is because it, it's already managed. They already use. They're all. So yeah. So the reason they're using Windows is because they're using it. 
basically. That's that's the reason. Because um, yeah. it's there. Yeah. Basically. But actually, you know, for your enterprise environment, like all the workstations and stuff, and I'm not talking in the classrooms, even though there are the classroom or lab ones, but the rest of the enterprise, they're all running Windows workstations anyways. And it's just your whole active directory and shared or group policy setups and everything like that are actually easier on Windows Server, even though there is good Linux systems that can do the same thing. That's but, it, but the, the Windows is one's a lot easier for people managing it to go click. Like I love DNS on Windows servers compared to Linux servers, you know, because you can just say, here, the, I've got yeah, the a problem new, is that got a new station. That's yeah. Just what I said. It's like the, you were using it because you're using yeah. it, not because it's for you to switch. For people to to want to switch, mm -hmm. it has to be so much better, yeah. so much better that that like even Windows 10 didn't make when people switch. So it's like yeah, yeah, and uh, but they force it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. Uh, Question. Yeah. Uh, but how many issues outside the technology is your sis school system fighting? Because you're talking about uh, technology yeah, and, drugs. and inter <laughs> in interconnection, they but mean. if they are facing all these different issues... So, so this summer they installed like hundreds of security cameras mm -hmm. uh, to see who's smoking and who's not. And they have like, uh, <coughs> they have, like uh, stop like. Like, you know how there's the wrong way signs? They have the same thing with a cigarette, like, in the middle. <laughs> I didn't really see a difference. I mean, you just go, you go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom, and you just look at people. Like, yeah. It's yeah. so bad. People yeah, you just can't have a camera in there. Right? So, like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> They're not going to put a camera in the bathroom. I mean, I would like, the and, and now every time, I don't know if it's specific to my, I'm assuming it's not specific to my school. Uh, because in next, like, in most of the schools, um, even in my cousin's school in Boston, they all, all people just smoke. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they use marijuana and stuff. It's just, just yeah. bad. It's just bad. So yeah, that, those are the other problems other than technology. I would rather focus on technology because that's. I know. But even in the current state, it's better than what uh, the social, uh, the psychological stuff is. I just think about picking the battles. It's uh, what I mean. Implementate, have you considered the implementation over time, picking one area uh, to address passing. instead of a brute, brute force attack, taking one area that you could work on? Maybe steps. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, have, I have some stuff about that. Um, oh, okay. So, well, I forgot um, two slides ago. So, the reason um, that I told you that I wanted to conduct the interview was because I wanted to know how they choose software, how the district chooses software, and how open source stuff fits in it. So then, obviously there's privacy. So the first thing is, what does the company do with the data? There is how relevant the software is. I mean, you're not, you're not gonna take, teach like GIMP in a computer science class. And then there is um, money, which uh, at first seemed like it wouldn't be the first thing because he said the first thing to look at is the data and then at the end of the interview I, I was like actually give it like I was talking given two pieces of software that the teacher like type of software that the teacher needs one is cheaper um, less secure um, less privacy the other one is more expensive uh, more secure and then it's not, not going to compromise students data more than the other like more than the other one, which one would the district choose? So the first thing he said um, was money always wins. Mm -hmm. So then the, the finances department has the final word, always. And then it doesn't matter about the cybersecurity because money is just the end. It's, it's the period. But there's no fighting money, basically. It's just the end. So. Then even that is not going to make them switch Linux, even though it's free, which is interesting, because money always comes first. Okay, and for that, this is what we are right now. And then, what else? Hmm. Any questions? 
Okay. So what's actually happening? Everyone using Chromebooks. <coughs> Everyone's not caring about anything. Everyone's just scrolling on Instagram endlessly. And um, it's actually a pretty interesting story. Uh, there was someone sitting next to me that was texting um, her dad <coughs> something that I would assume is important. I'm like, you know, you shouldn't really SMS people stuff that you don't want other people to read because it's not very encrypted. And then and that was a very weird um, answer that I got. What else should I use? Like the complete opposite of what I expected. The kind of like, when you, when you tell someone that what they're doing is wrong, you don't expect them to be like, yo, how can I fix it? Why not? Because <clears throat> no one really wants to be told that they're wrong. Yeah. Like when you go to someone, like, oh, you shouldn't use Windows, you should use Linux. It's not, a, it's an attack. When you attack someone's choices, you attack them, mm -hmm. basically. So when you tell someone that what they're doing is wrong, you attack their, per like, th them, uh, personally. Even though I would, I might, might not see that as an attack on the person, and the person you talk to might see as an attack on them, and that's, that's the end of being able to talk to that person, maybe try to convince them, right? So, everyone has an iPhone, no one really cares. And in my math class in freshman year, when you were, uh, we had to put phones in a basket um, before the test, literally the only difference between the phones was the case. All the phones were the same, except my phone. I, had a, I didn't have a phone, actually. Um, yeah, my sister, I had an iPhone 5S that my grandpa bought. Uh, four years ago, and then it broke, and then we fixed it, and then the camera disconnected from the motherboard, and then I put it on the side of the sofa, and then my sister kicked it, and now it doesn't work. So I, I had the iPhone 5S, but that, that was after my sister kicked it off the sofa. So I didn't have a phone. And then, yeah, I was, I was amazed, like, because people, iPhones are so expensive, and then you just see, uh, San Diego's pretty really, really rich area. So everyone just has iPhones, and you, you go outside, everyone has Tesla, not everyone, like, you see Teslas in a, I see, like, Teslas are so common. Kids have Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> like, a friend of my sister, I have a twin sister, she's in my school, a friend of my sister got a Tesla for her birthday. Oh, wow. Well, got me. People are, San Diego, people are so rich, it's incredible. You yeah. just, you go, like, it's, yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. And then, then you, pretty, you don't care. Like, you, you're rich. Money does not a problem. And the main thing when people are trying to convince is not eth ethics. You know, when you try to convince somebody to use Linux, it's not ethics. That's more about the, uh, the money. It's just in my area, money is not really a problem. And people just do whatever they want. And they just show off and stuff. And, yeah. So, uh, iPhone 10 came out. I'm like, yo, probably most people are not gonna get the iPhone 10. It's gonna be like iPhone 8 and stuff. No, everyone has an iPhone 10. Everyone just has a thousand dollar phone. And if you don't have an iPhone, it's either because yeah, your carrier stuff is bad, you're a weirdo like me, you use Android, <laughs> or or you don't have, or you're an outsider because everyone uses not everyone that's not American doesn't use. Apple. If you don't have iMessage, you're outside all the social groups. So then you're robotics, pretty much. You're an outsider if you have an iPhone. It's the complete opposite. If you go to robotics, people that have iPhones are like, why do you have an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. No one, like, because everyone uses iMessage and robotics, no, not so much. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, do you have, anyone have any questions? Yes. Well, somebody asked a question about the source word, you know, the textbooks, the actual, you know, you, you go to school to get an education, the teacher's going to... Oh, what they teach us? To ...present you with oh. you know, algebra or history or whatever, right? So, so are you, you said you're still using old-fashioned textbooks. Um, so the textbooks, at least in my classes, are not the main thing to focus on. Um, in, we don't, like in history, we have a textbook. No one reads it. You're supposed to read it. Like, you just go and you just look up. The, like, just, no one reads any textbooks. I mean, in math, you only go to, over the textbook because it's where the questions are for the homework. Yeah, specific problems, yeah. In, in physics, 
Um, we don't get homework, so no, 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 no book. We don't read the book. And then in computer science, no textbook. Uh, P or something in the textbook. Yeah. Do you have an idea in schools now what percentage is Apple? What percentage? Yeah, 90, is I, I would, in an affluent area, ninety-five percent would be an Apple. Mm -hmm. um, for the for the phones, and then five percent maybe Galaxy S10 or something like that. How about computers? Com for computers, would be if you're a gamer, you would use Windows. Yeah. If you care about technology, I don't know, in my school, like six people use Linux you know, out of twenty-seven hundred. And then if you, everyone else uses a Mac. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What about actually like in the districts and in the classrooms? Were like ninety plus percent Windows systems or for using for like while, in the like in the Apple what the school gives us. Or what people yeah, choose what, to use first. What's the, what, what can be used? I guess what the school gives you, and then so does, does anybody actually use like what's available from the school as their laptop? We don't, you laptop? don't get a personal laptop from the school. Mm -hmm. So every so time you come to class, if you, you, get, you have Chromebook carts, and then a teacher has to reserve the Chromebook cart for that specific <coughs> class or period, and then you get a Chromebook, you use it. You're, put it back in the Coromba card and it goes back to the media center. And te technology classes like CAD or photography or computer science, it's a Windows device, probably Windows 7. Um, they were just rolling out Windows 10 and I was asking how, how are they rolling out so many Windows 10s? They have like an image that they pushed to all the computers. Uh, yes? Well, so now with Microsoft and Windows 10, Microsoft Edge change into Chromium. Do you anticipate seeing more Microsoft surfaces They're expensive. School to replace these Chromebooks? They're expensive. Chromebooks are way cheaper. <coughs> and they auto update and they have like it's it's so so easy. For a, imagine being a, a, a administrator for this school. You just have a Chromebook, you use it, you don't use it, it auto, auto updates. You, it, like it does it for you. You don't need to worry about anything. And if you had your own custom solution, you would have to, you know, well, this computer broke this time. I have to go fix it. I have to do this. I have to do that. Uh, yes. Uh, so my partner's a teacher, and he said that they replaced in the last three years they replaced all the Chromebooks twice because they don't last more than a year and a half. They do. What? All of them. Actually. Apparently, it all crapped out except for like five. And we have, depending on, on the. Uh, the department, like social sciences, get the worst <laughs> Chromebooks. <laughs> and you get the oldest one. Oh, English gets the worst, and then social science gets the second worst, and then math. Um, we had, in freshman year, I was in math class, and we got like Chromebooks instead of, um, do you know uh, Common Core? So then the, it was a, a new thing, and then, and then they, we had we got like Chromebooks instead of uh wait uh we're we're in the hmm part. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got this, this, this yeah. Uh, oh. How much paper is still It's always up to the teacher. I mean, teachers get a lot of freedom um, in how, how they choose to do stuff. They don't have to use Google Classroom, they don't have to use paper, they can do whatever they want. What they, but what they can't do is have a Chromebook every day for all these students, basically. That's a minor limitation, yeah. So I'm, I live in Eastern Washington, and I've been doing this computer stuff for way too many years. Um, I run IT departments where we had large numbers of Windows systems inside local government. And I paid lots of technicians to sit around for hours watching progress bars on Windows. Exactly. <laughs> what an inane waste of human resources to have to sit in front of your Windows system and have them occasionally push a button until you figure out how to get an image, which will only work on one specific Model. system. Yep. So what they, I think what they do in our school, they like um, my math teacher wanted to install a driver for a printer she got from a parent, and she couldn't because the district was like, no, no so, drivers because we have all the computers have to be the same. Right. So uh, in Moses Lake, the school district bought 5,000 Chromebooks 
and each student gets a Chromebook in high school. Um, and Chromebooks are so cheap. There are no, there are no, there is no problem with sitting around watching uh, progress bars and installing Windows bullshit on systems. Mm -hmm. So think of the human resources that you save, or a school district saves, yeah. by having a bunch of Chromebooks. I applaud the move to Chromebooks. Yes. I have a Chromebook. I have some Chromebooks that are five years old. They just run and run and run. When one breaks, you sign into your account again, and within five minutes, it's pre-provisioned with everything you need. How amazing. What an incredible saving. And if you do that, as an IT director, you know that you're going to be able to hire a large number of your IT staff. I also like the school uses Chromebooks because it's way easier. And that's going to save uh, school districts a lot of money. And where are they going to spend that money? On stopping people from using drugs? <laughs> I don't know. That, that definitely doesn't work. <laughs> like, people just, people just. I'm, I'm more concerned, like, so they got all the cheap Chromebooks, but what does that do for, like, ecosystem time? Because suddenly every, like, like, the Chromebooks themselves, I think, are great, but the issue I see potentially is it just sort of pulls everyone into the Google ecosystem. Yeah. Well, I'm a Google fanboy, so I don't care. The problem, is yeah. not, <laughs> the problem is not with the specific machine. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you don't want a monopoly to start when you're 15, when you're 13, when you're 12. You can't have it so early. People have to have their own. They, you can't have your decision made for you when you choose to go to a public school. So that's why you know school districts have to start allowing. If they're going to allow that then they get their Chromebooks so they can take care of the, the great unwashed masses who can't afford a Windows mm -hmm. PC or an iMac. But you have to allow students to, to bring their own devices. And that opens up a whole other can of worms. But the good news there is that if you are simply deploying a bunch of Windows systems inside of a school district and they come to, to my junior college to learn what to do in a computer science class, they have no idea how to do any file management or anything. They've been fed, fed pablum by the school district for so long that they don't know how to control their own system. They yeah. can't figure out even how to download a piece of software and put it in the right directory. Yeah. What a horrible mess. Yeah. Well, yes. No wonder the Chinese are kicking our asses. <laughs> are they? Wouldn't, wouldn't yes, they are. Yeah. I'm not saying Chromebooks are bad for schools. I'm just saying that the, 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 the problem is that you can't, after they said it, like you can't force a monopoly when you're 11. I mean, it's, it's not a, you can leave your Chromebook environment. Nobody says you have to stay. No, but you get a, a school, you get an account from your school. You're forced to use it to get your school resources. Like it's very, very forced, all this Google thing. And then your information is in Google. You're, your last name, first name, even if you don't want it to be. Wear a tinfoil hat if it bothers you. Is there a Linux <laughs> class club in your school? Nope. Why not start one? Uh, because it would be me and two people. <laughs> Are you yeah. sure? It would be you and two people to start with. Let's go. There's the difference. You know, it grows. Uh, so I teach at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. It's in Kirkland. And uh, we have a Linux start program. So student population are doing ranges from 15 year olds who can't drive to the campus and you know 60, 70 year olds who are taking $15 classes as a hobby. And uh, to some extent, like take hardware out of the equation, like uh, we're all actually using the same interface. 99% of the stuff we do on our computers now, which is the internet. And um, the system that Lake Washington uses is uh, called Canvas. It's an yeah. open source. Yeah. Um, like classroom management. Oh, well, that's so yeah. that's where I post my assignments and stuff. Uh, I was curious, like, um, I would recommend trying to get that into your schools. Yeah, I was like, I'm about to say, keep in mind that whatever I'm saying is specific to what I see in my school, not every school yeah, like, in every state. 
in the United States. That's, that's the beauty of Lake Washington. It's like to some extent, like I don't know how old people are, so the fifteen year olds are treated just as much as an adult as um, the people who are, you know, coming back to work or coming back to school after four years in the workforce. And uh, uh, I don't care what their computers are because everyone's going to have their own, uh, and uh, to some extent they all log into whatever browser they want and the opens like the way they interact with the class entirely through a web browser and you know like how, how many of you open calculator as an application anymore i i just oh, yeah. google challenge can't uh i just google i don't know yeah, i just don't type them to your apple and it comes <laughs> like, <laughs> like 99 percent of tasks can be done over a web browser and um it's sort of a ubiquitous thing that um, it takes the hardware question out of the equation no, I'm, I'm a high risk fine. I just promise to go on Google. I don't know. I would, I would just say I love Canvas and I recommend it. And yeah. From what I hear from people who are on Blackboard, like, yeah. better. Yes. Well, like, w w one of the things that I just kind of keep on thinking of is like, 15, 20 years ago, Max had the education market cornered. Now, how many of us who huh. grew up with that are using Mac on the desktop? Unless we're an artist, yeah. probably not. Exactly. Uh, you know, the next big. Uh, uh, tech boom is gonna be something different. I think what's really key there is having that healthy relationship with technologists, being able to talk to teachers and be ahead of that curve and say, hey, by the way, here's what we saw with Apple. Here's what we saw with Google. Please don't let this happen again because kids' data will be leaked. Uh, you'll have scenarios where uh, you know Chromebooks uh, are a kind of software that's in essence spying on kids in their homes, which happened you know, recently, and there's, you know, yeah. kids in their bedrooms and getting pictures sent back to the admin, but that was not okay. You know, there's this whole ecosystem of serious tech problems that I think the biggest solution here is, you know, getting technologists to have realistic conversations with teachers who can say, okay, I have, I see 200 students in a day, I have five preps, how can you make my life easier without, you know, being Google or whatever the next thing. So, uh, is. what he said, the uh, cybersecurity person, when I asked him, um, so how, like, what's the one thing that's going to change it? How, like, how, what do you see? What would change it? Like, when you when you uh, look at the current state, well, free software and education, what's going to change it? What's going to make people use a different software, regardless of what it is? So he said it's only if teachers and students together said, we don't want to use this anymore. Which is, like I said, it's a double-edged sword. Because on one hand, no one cares. On the other, it is it is possible to change because if you get enough people to a, a rally around some someone that's going to change it, it's going to be able to change. Yeah. Um, to that point, I'd like to um, talk a bit about my experience trying to move uh, a, a set of classes at uh, my where I went to high school over to open source software. Um, so this was a, a and, then, and then I'd like to discuss some if anybody else there sees any other opportunities like this where they touch education. Um, it was a uh, design and particularly computer aided design class. Um, and what we had available to us were ancient XP machines running Autodesk from, uh, or like 3ds Max from <coughs> six years ago, ancient license. Uh, the rendering looked like something out of like the mid 90s. It was, it was, um, and this is what we had to work on for our, our design courses. It's like, sure, it's a perfectly usable design system, but they didn't want to spend the money to upgrade to something that was more close to industry standard. So I looked around and I saw what was available. Um, and Blender, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Blender. Blender, Blender. Well, don't need Blender. Uh, I have my book. Yeah, and so the next year I, I took the, uh, the self-guided design course and, and I started talking with the teachers and I'm like, well, you know what? We, I think we should start looking at Blender because the students are not like, they're not having a good experience using this ancient version of 3ds Max that like 
They got for three, free for three years, yeah. um, and it's incredible software and it earns with three D printers. It's great. I use machines by three. I use Fusion, and it's free. Um, it's free, but it's free. Under thirteen, it's a problem. Pardon? It's free, but you can't use it without an Autodesk account, correct? Yeah. So depending on the age, you have a CIPA, FERPA type problem now. Um, because of the legal requirements, you must be above 13. Now, obviously, if you're in a high school, yeah. then you can get away with that, although you're probably going to have to make sure parents are signing off and all this. We're back in that legal loop now. And, and obviously, you can use any of the AutoCAD software for free at this point, uh, as long as you don't expect support, really. But they, I mean, and that's, so now we have that situation where you got free commercial viewed software, free open source software trying to get the school district to uh, get behind something that they don't understand, they don't know, they don't have training for, they weren't trained in school for, versus now the free version of everything that is considered normal and that they have the training for, or you know, that they've used in the past. And so now you've got that dynamic that's... The other thing that, that we do in Grant County is that Big Bend is we use a lot of Raspberry Pis. We don't just hand kids Raspberry Pis. We actually, because we're a college, we, we have our students buy this stuff. So they pretty much own Raspberry Pis. They own uh, Circuit Playgrounds. They own Arduino kits. I won't teach anything in my classes that the students don't own this stuff because I want it to be total immersion. Um, all the books are pretty much free. Uh, you can buy a, a free Arduino kit uh, from Amazon for 54 bucks. Um, you can take neophytes, complete neophytes, an incredible distance in a very short amount of time. And with Raspberry Pis, all that software is free. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, kind of going back to the subject of your talk, uh, what is it like to be using you know, to be a student with the Chromebook, like for example, do you have to have a Google account to do your homework? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, but you get you get from the from the school. Yeah, yeah. school so just has their own. Don't, don't yeah, you get your, yeah. It's like a car corporation thing. Yeah. Okay. Just like when you get your own domain and stuff. So you get a co account from the school. Um, you have to go to Google Classrooms, all that crap. Yeah. So do. so even if you're trying to avoid using, uh, you know. The Chromebooks and the Google services and stuff. You're gonna have to because you have to do it at least for homework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that comes back to what you were saying before about basically being forced to accept the Google EULA because mm -hmm. you have to in order to do your homework. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but you don't sign anything because you just get account and password. You don't create the account. You just get the account. So, technically, oh. I didn't sign anything when I got when my parents signed me um, to register me to the school. They probably signed something, but I like also when you're under 18, nothing that you sign really matters. But when my parents signed me to the school, I'm I'm assuming they 
you have to sign some kind of a secrecy thing. And you have to release all the information. But that's probably all, all schools. But like the school can do whatever they want. And you have to trust the school to handle it correctly. So do most people have multiple accounts, like their school Google yeah. account plus yeah. their personal Google account yeah. plus? That's technically not true. Your parents can say that you, they do not authorize you to yeah. um, use Google services. And the school will have to make accommodations. Thank you very much. Um, now, how, will, how well will you be able to make those accommodations once you start climbing up to grade level? That's different. You yeah. know, but um, parents can't technically say no. And then the other thing they can do is they, they can ask, ask you to here. see everything that is recorded that you've done. And now school has to try to so the school assemble them, all that. So I asked them what, what they do with the data after I graduate. So what happens, Google gives the district all the data, and they probably keep it forever, um, unless they run out of space. I think it's normal. Yes. So I'm kind of from the pre Self-hosted. <coughs> oh, no, that's the thing. They can do Moodle self-hosted. Oh, yeah, they can do self-hosted, and that's too much money. There's yes. already open source textbooks out there for free, yeah. like all math, up to your algebra, as I found. And people still don't use those in the classroom. So what's going to change if there even is a good open source alternative? Um, all these people just rally. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea. I mean, if you, if you want to go. I think you need to talk to, um, like, you need to talk to people who get to make these decisions about what goes where. Yeah. Um, and you need to get buy-in from the teachers to actually start, you know, prodding their their higher ups and the people who make decisions. But you know, this is how I bother putting back in my classroom. Um, and and yeah, you need to focus on, on what benefits it can bring to the students and where the potential ethical concerns are. This is how I think I need to do. Uh, your question. <coughs> oh, I just had a comment that like what, one of the interesting things. pushing this concept called OER, which is Open Education Resources. And the idea, uh, it starts with, um, uh, yeah, yeah, right? again, like, it's not a rich school, like we got like, yeah, homeless students. Um, so it's the opposite of your San Diego problem. Um, but we have students where if you have a uh, textbook that's $200 or even $20, that's a major financial impediment. Um, uh, so as often as possible, that textbook is oftentimes not worth the money, and a resource out there is almost identical, but free and open source. And this can even be in the form of lesson plans and classroom plans that people have just distributed uh, into the Creative Commons. So uh, they've been pushing open education resources from the top down, and I think that's what you should look at is how can you get your school to push open education resources? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.